Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And if you don't know already, AMD is about to launch a bunch of new chipsets for its Socket AM5 platform that support Ryzen 7000 and 9000 series CPUs. And those chipsets have been winging their way to manufacturers so they can use them on a range of new motherboards for Socket AM5. And we are beginning our 800 series chipset coverage here today on the channel with a preview of a very special motherboard from MSI, the MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. So this motherboard very well regarded in its previous iterations on other chipsets. Here today we have probably the most premium looking version of the Carbon Wi-Fi that I've ever seen. Obviously sporting the X870E premium flagship chipset for AMD and this thing has some real killer features. It looks absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to be doing today is running through a preview. We're not allowed to do reviews yet. That will come uh, next week and the week after. Uh, but we are allowed to show you what you get in the box. So we'll be doing a quick unboxing video. We'll be looking at the features of this board. In particular, the brand new DIY EZ features from MSI, which make your life and my life as well a lot easier when it comes to building a PC. So there's a whole raft of innovations on this motherboard that we're going to be checking out, um, especially some of the tool-free features as well, because they've really dulled things up a notch with this generation. So today it's an unboxing, it's a preview, looking at the features and coming to some conclusions at the end. Obviously, we can't really talk about pricing or performance or anything yet. That will come very, very soon. And uh, I'm working really hard this week to try and get as much done for you guys this week. I'm actually on uh, holiday vacation uh, next week, which is a little bit trying, but obviously AMD kind of delayed the launch of the X870 chipset um, instead of launching it at the same time as the processors a month or two ago. So that's made things a bit tricky from a reviewer's point of view, especially if, like me, you have a holiday book next week. So anyway, we're going to try and get through as much stuff as we come, but a lot of my coverage might come uh, just in the first or second week of October. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications if you want to watch those videos. And uh, obviously, I want to thank MSI for sending over this product and sponsoring today's video as well. Much appreciated. And we'll be probably looking at lots of new motherboards from MSI and other man manufacturers here on the channel as well today. So that's it from me. Let's crack on with the unboxing. So here we are with the MSI MPG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. And we are going to just have a little look inside the box and check out the motherboard now. So... Very, very heavy, this thing. I've uh, already lifted up the box so I, I know what we're actually dealing with. And uh, very attractive motherboard. I like the uh, the design. Very chunky heat sinks. And we have a whole bunch of tool-free features on here that we're going to look at in a minute. And um, massive VRMs as well. So very, very heavy motherboard. You want to be paying attention when you're handling this thing. You definitely don't want to drop it because it will either break itself or break your foot or break your floor or something so definitely want to be aware of the uh, of the weight that we've got here so just going to put that to one side because we're mainly here for the unboxing for the moment so I am going to open this box to see what we get I do love accessories with motherboards I have to say I know that the the value kind of comes from the motherboard and you're probably just going to chuck the accessories back in the box but if you're spending a fair amount of money on a motherboard like this one then you do kind of want to see some nice stuff in the box as well I think it just adds to the experience so we've got a uh, desktop aerial here and uh, here we have the new kind of push fit easy connectors that we've got from MSI a whole bunch of tool free and um, easier fitment components that we've got on the motherboard and including the Wi-Fi aerial and this is a familiar theme across lots of manufacturers this time around so that is the Wi-Fi aerial for the onboard Wi-Fi 7 and uh, if we have a look in the box we can see that the accessory pack isn't crazy on this motherboard we've just got a bunch of cables so it looks like motherboard manufacturers are not, not so much cutting back but a lot of the features that we saw last time like expansion cards and that kind of stuff is kind of counteracted by the fact that we have a lot more going on on the motherboards themselves. So just seeing what other stuff we have here, um, just some kind of key. I have actually have no idea what that is at the moment. So uh, we do have a driver disc as well, driver um, USB flash drive. So all, everything that you need is on there. So you don't necessarily have to connect to the internet to download stuff and a lot of people can't. So that is pretty much all of the interesting stuff. The rest of it you just get 
SATA cables, you get an RGB splitter cable down in there as well, and uh, a few RGB extension cables. So this board obviously having the four pin RGB lighting as well as three pin ARGB. And that's something that's actually reasonably rare this time around. Um, a lot of boards are actually ditching four pin. Uh, so kind of good to see there's a little bit of flexibility there. An extension for the header on the motherboard so just making your life a little bit easier so you don't have to reach all the way into your case you can just put this onto your motherboard uh, connect it up to your case's front panel and then uh, away you go basically and the only other component that we've got is a uh, three pin to i believe that's corsair and other manufacturers use that kind of connector there so just a converter for the rgb lighting depending on what things you use. So that is it pretty much for the, the unboxing. So we're just gonna put the box to one side and get rid of the accessories so we can actually have a look at the motherboard here. So yeah, as I mentioned, a lot going on and there's been a heck of a lot of research and R&D and all that kind of stuff, development going on to the tool free features. So for example here, we have a completely tool-free design for the large M.2 heatsink here. And this is um, a one-up on the ASUS Crosshair Hero that we've got this time. This thing uh, down here, it has a large heatsink going across here as well. That is not tool-free. You actually get four um, screws in that thing. So this is definitely a lot better than the ASUS Crosshair for that reason. Now, how easy it is to actually put back on remains to be seen surprisingly easy okay <laughs> just going to make sure that uh, that wasn't a fluke so just going to slide that back in and uh, press it down like so so very very easy installation and that is obviously catering for three uh, PCI Express slots down there so let's see how easy the one up the top here is so it removes easy enough. And uh, something I should mention here is that this one does actually have RGB lighting on the logo as well that we'll uh, look at in the full review. And uh, that is courtesy, even though that this thing is tool free and doesn't have any cables or other stuff, courtesy of this connector down here. So this kind of stuff will add a fair bit to the price of the motherboard, but um, I think you can agree that that looks pretty awesome. And again, is something that a lot of other motherboards, such as the ASUS Crosshair Hero, don't have. They just have RGB lighting up here. But I kind of like a bit of RGB lighting kind of spread around on the board, little logos and that kind of stuff. And that just, it's just kind of cool having it there, even though you know there are no cables attached to it. So top side and bottom side cooling for your M.2 SSDs on all of the ports here. So that's um, a pretty awesome feature. Now of the four M.2 ports that we've got here, Two of them are PCI Express 5, which is this one and this one, and then the rest are PCI Express 4. So that's probably more than enough for most people. I think four SSD slots is probably enough for most people as well. So um, obviously if you need more, there are some other options here. You do have um, a, another slot down here. You could use this one. And uh, this slot down here is another um, top trump win for the MSI because the ASUS Crosshair Hero doesn't have a third slot. It only has the two primary uh, PCI Express 16 time slots. So do love those, uh, those M.2 ports. Just makes installing your hardware a lot easier and we'll be doing some performance numbers and uh, thermal results on this board in the very near future as well. So just gonna reconnect these and uh, just show one last time that it wasn't a fluke, me um, getting it kind of all hooked up. Now this one's proving to be a little bit more tricky. Yeah, I just hope it's, uh, it's probably just me being stupid. Yeah, there we go. I kind of, um, I wasn't hooking it round easy enough. So maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit trickier dealing with this one. Um, but obviously the trouble you have down here is that your graphics card will kind of sit over that heatsink. So if you do have one, um, one SSD, you probably want to use it in that slot. Uh, but as I mentioned, with PCI Express 5 and all that kind of stuff, I know a lot of you out there probably considering those fast SSDs. Um, you might want to have it in this one because the heatsink is larger. It might just help dissipate the uh, the heat that those things produce as well. So, so we've already seen the easy installation of the M.2 heatsinks, and now we have easy M.2 clip. 
This is a revised version of what we've seen before, and uh, we saw it a little bit at Computex a couple of months ago. So again, no screws required at all for your M.2 installation. This is the easy M.2 clip down here, and you can see that is as easy as it is to install your M.2 SSD. So there's basically like a little rocker module on the end here that you just basically push the SSD through, you hear it clip in and it's basically fixed in there. And then to remove your SSD, you just basically pull that forwards like so, and your SSD is released again. So that's gonna be an interesting test to see whether or not that provides enough pressure to actually cool your SSD properly. Uh, there are no extra thermal pads or anything in the box, so one hopes that this kind of works as standard out of the box. Very, very easy to use and super, super easy to just slot your SSD in and get it out again. Now, the slot up here has a slightly different mechanism. So if we slot it in up here, we're still using the usual kind of slide around uh, fit, uh, fitment down there. So that's uh, slightly different, probably because there's not quite enough space here. You've got the RGB lighting connector down there as well. So just a slightly different fitment depending on where you're installing it, but the rest of the slots all have the easy M.2 clip. So as well as the easy M.2 shields and heat sinks, we also have easy PIC, uh, PCIe release. So this is something that I absolutely love, especially when the graphics card is kind of lodged down here and you've got a large heat sink here. Once your graphics card is, install is installed, it's pretty much impossible to get at the latch to release it. And that is something that MSI has clearly thought a lot about. And uh, as you can see here, that whole slot actually moves. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, just grab a graphics card that is over in front of me here. So we have an RTX 4090 Founders Edition, which I just happen to have lying around. And uh, we're just gonna see how that works in front of us right now. So from a benchmarking point of view, a reviewer like myself, having the quick release on the PCIe is super, super useful. I have lost count of the number of times that I've had to reach for a screwdriver to get down in here. And you can see otherwise with that heatsink there, there is absolutely no way that you can get to that latch with your fingers. So this is a really, really great feature. You don't need to reach down there with a screwdriver potentially damaging your motherboard. All you have to do is press this button here and you'll be able to see the mechanism down there moving. And hopefully I can lift the graphics card up. It's easier said than done when it's down like this because um, the uh, motherboard is obviously on the table, but I kind of wanted to do it so you could kind of see what was going on, which is difficult to do on a test bench. But there you can see, easily removable. So that is an absolutely awesome feature and that is easy PCIe release. And I'll just show you that mechanism at work again down there. So it feels really well made, I have to say. It's um, it's very solid, so it kind of push once and it opens and then push again and it actually closes the latch. So that's probably a little bit better than other implementations of this that I've seen because here you can actually tell just from the noise of the thing, it kind of clicks when it's open, I think. So I'm just gonna test that right now to double check that I'm right about that. Yeah, so that, that is in. And then I think another press and that actually locks it in place, as you can see down there. So I know that the a new impl uh, implementation from one of the competition has a basically a slim fitting of this where you just kind of pull the graphics card out from the edge and it lifts it up. I'm not massively keen on that because it still feels like the graphics card isn't that secure, but here with MSI's easy PCIe release, it does seem to be a slightly better implementation. So we're just gonna try that again, pop it, and you can hear the nice click there. So I'm assuming that that can now be removed. Yeah, I really, really like that feature. I like the, you can audibly hear it when it's locked in place. You can see it as well, because now it's kind of moved a bit further down press it in again and it locks it open. So you kind of lock it open, unlock it closed, lock it open. So yeah, I think that's a really, really great feature. I think that's probably the best implementation of any kind of um, easy socket release there for your graphics card.
Now, something that I know has got a lot of attention with the X870 motherboards is the rear I.O. panel. And for some pretty good reasons, as you can see, this thing looks absolutely incredible. Now, MSI does have a slightly different implementation here. It's actually got round buttons, which I think looks absolutely awesome. Again, this is a bit of a, um, a, bit of a trump over the uh, Crosshair Hero from ASUS. I think this I.O. panel looks great. And I just like the very clear labeling here as well. So here are the Wi-Fi mod, the Wi-Fi connectors. So again, these are basically push fit now. You don't have to fiddle around screwing anything on there. And uh, yeah, I just love the design on this. And also that it's, it is clearly labeled, as I've already mentioned, because if you're fiddling around with ports and you need to get the right one, especially when it comes to Type-C, if you need to make use of the um, USB 4 uh, 40 gigabit ports, which are these two here, you, they're just clearly labeled. So there's no guesswork to go on here. You don't need to refer to the manual or anything like that. Everything is labeled. So um, not that it needs that much labeling because all of the USB 3 ports are USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, 10 gigabit. So there are no USB 2 or straight um, straight USB 3s. They're all USB 3.2 Gen 2. So we get USB BIOS flashback on the button down here. We get CMOS clear button and a smart button as well, which I believe can be configured. And the other Type-C port down here is uh, just uh, just 10G, so USB 3.2 as well. So a display output, always useful. So I believe that's HDMI uh, 2.1, and that's just used for, if, for the, at the very least, for just troubleshooting. So if you suspect your graphics card might have died or your graphics card has actually died, it's always useful to have one of those. So audio, a lot of people are ditching the usual six ports here now. So they're just assuming that you're either using a, uh, a USB DAC or USB audio device, or you're using the optical here. Obviously, you've still got the connectors for stereo speakers and microphone up there as well. Um, networking, not really a major bump in terms of wired networking over previous generations. We've still still capping out at 5G. 10G is still going to be um, resigned to super premium motherboards and those that can afford a, uh, a router or a switch that is 10 gigabit as well. So. Um, not everybody is going to want or able to do that. So looking further around the board, we can see that we do have some overclocking and testing tools down here. I find this useful because I'm, I'm, I'm a reviewer. I'm often testing motherboards outside of the case, but it is useful when you're building your PC because it just means that you can power on your case, your, your motherboard, sorry, power on your system outside of the case and uh, just test all the components before you install it and uh, cable tidy everything away and find out that some component in your memory or something is um, dead on arrival, which is never a good thing. So what else do we have? LED postcode display. Um, I do still like having this and the um, easy debug LEDs up there on AMD motherboards, especially just because with memory training, overclocking and that kind of stuff, AMD still tends to be a little bit more um, prone to not booting and that kind of stuff than Intel. Uh, these days, it's usually just the um, the memory training side of things. You, I just like to know what my motherboard is doing, and I don't want to be sit there for you know ten minutes and just forget that the thing is actually still memory training, or whether it is like a hard lockup or something, and I need to restart it. So, always useful. I would never ever be without a uh, an LED LED postcode display, or at the very least, some of the Easy Debug LEDs down there, so you get both of them on this motherboard. So that is it today for our preview of the fabulous looking MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. We'll be back with full pricing, a full review of this and many, many more boards to come over the next week or two here on the channel. So don't forget to like and comment on this video. It helps a lot to get me noticed and just helps punch me through the algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. Thanks a lot to MSI for helping out with today's video and I'll be back very, very soon. Thank <laughs> you.